What's going on everyone? This is Kevin here, coming at you with Motorola Moto G 5G 2023 tips and tricks and hidden features. So stay tuned if you want to get the most out of your device. So this is the Moto G 5G 2023. Now despite this phone being a more affordable option for Motorola, there's a lot of cool things and features this phone has, and I'm looking forward to showing you all of that here in this video. Now the first thing I wanna show you is a quick and easy way to get to the camera app here in the phone, and all you have to do is just double press on the power button. However, this is not set up by default, so let me show you how to get this going. So what you're gonna do is pull down the shade here, go to the gear icon for the settings. Then from there, you're gonna scroll down to where it says gestures. Now there's a lot of good stuff here and I'll be showing you all these various features throughout this video. But for now, we're gonna go down to where it says double press power key. And if you go there, you can see that it's set to none right now, but instead you can switch it to launch camera. So now that I did that, all I have to do is simply double press on that button and it pulls up the camera app. Now in this instance, I haven't actually set the default camera app so I'm gonna do that right now. And there we go, it pulls it up. So let's try that one more time. And there we go, it took me right to the camera. And it doesn't matter where I am throughout the phone's operating system, this feature will work no matter what. So as I mentioned, in this gestures menu, in the settings, there's a bunch of different abilities here, with some of them already being set up by default, but others not being enabled. So for those ones, you will have to actually go in here and set them to be active. But starting off here, I wanna show you the sidebar. Now the sidebar is not enabled by default, so we'll enable that right now. Okay. And then now with that set up, you can now see the sidebar. Basically it's this little side notch almost. And then if you swipe over on that, you're gonna see quite a few different apps here. Now what's awesome about this is you can further customize this and you can also go to this button right here to access any application installed on the phone. So no matter where you are, maybe you're already in a different app, and then you swipe over on the sidebar, you can then pull up any of these apps here or access anything on the phone. But in addition to that, you can see there's a gear icon for the settings. And if we go here, you can even further customize that sidebar. So you can actually add in different tools and contacts as well. So there is way more that you can do than just setting apps. Now, if you go here, you'll see that there's some other options, but also you can go here to choose how your apps will open. So actually by default, if you use the sidebar and you open up an app, it's gonna show up in a small pop-up window known as Freeform. Now, if you want it to open as a full screen application instead, you also have that ability. But let me show you what I mean. So basically, I'm gonna swipe over here, and then let's say I wanna do the calculator app. So if I tap on calculator, you can see, and I'll get this alert out of there, there is now the floating calculator. So it doesn't open it up as a full-on application, but instead it opens it up as a mini app. And then from there, you can still interact with other aspects of the device. So this is excellent for multitasking, and it is cool you can move it around too. But if you go to this minus button on the upper left, that'll actually shrink it down to this small kind of floating circle so that you can really do whatever you want on the phone, but still have easy access to that application. And then to make it a full screen app, you can just tap on the arrow button right here, and then it now expands it. Also in the gestures menu, there's an option for system navigation. So by default with this device, we are getting the traditional Android three button navigation. Now I know that many people do prefer this and like that. So it is good that they do set that as the default. However, you can also set this phone to do gesture based navigation instead. And if you've never done that, then I do at least recommend giving it a try. So heading back over to the settings, you can go here to system navigation, and then you can switch to gesture navigation. So once you do that, you'll see that instead of those three buttons, we now have one small line down here. And then to go home, you're gonna swipe up. To go to your recent apps, you're gonna swipe partially up. And then to go back, you're gonna swipe from the side. So overall, that is very intuitive. So it really comes down to personal preference for which one you prefer. Now there are some additional settings. So if you go there, you can set sensitivity, for example. And if you wanna hide that little line, you can do that too. And it really changes no way with how gesture-based navigation actually works. But heading back here, and then we'll switch back to three-button navigation. You can go to this gear icon as well to decide if you do want to hold on the home button to activate the assistant. Now moving down on this list, the next one here is one-handed mode. Now to actually use one-handed mode to its full ability, you will wanna switch the phone back to gesture-based navigation. So keep that in mind, but we'll go back here and then I'll go to one-handed mode, enable that. So now with one-handed mode enabled, we'll go back to the home screen here, and then I can swipe down, 
and then it's going to lower the whole display. So I can now reach with just one hand all portions of the display on the operating system here. And then to get out of this, I can just tap outside of the actual OS. And then if I want this to pull up notifications instead, I can switch over to that. And then swiping down shows the notification shade. So that makes a lot of sense too. Now there is also a one-handed mode shortcut. So if you do want to enable that, you will get this pop-up on the side. It'll pretty much be there at all times. But what's cool about that is that you can actually switch back over to three button navigation and you still can use one handed mode. You just have to tap right here and it lowers everything down. And I did set it up to do the notification shade instead. So let me go back here, go to one handed mode, switch it to pull screen into reach. And then now you can see it does indeed lower the whole screen here, despite me not having the phone set to gesture based navigation. But of course, in return for that, you are gonna have this pop up here at all times. Now we also have two options here for putting the display to sleep and waking the display. So first we'll go to put display to sleep and basically with that enabled, if you were on the lock screen here and you double tap, it'll now turn off the display. And then for waking the display, you can see that by default, moving the phone will actually wake up the display. This is the way that it typically is, but you can also just tap on the display to do the same thing. So just like that, tapping on the display then pulls up the time and more info here, such as the battery percentage and date. Now the next thing I want to do is show you how to take a screenshot with the Motorola Moto G 5G 2023. And there are three different methods I want to show you to achieve this. Now the first way to take a screenshot is simply to do the volume down button and power button at the same times. So we'll do this right now, just for about a second there, hold it. And from there you can edit, share, or delete. Now the second way to take a screenshot involves using the recent apps button. So this will have to be an app in your recent apps, but basically from there, you'll see right here, there's an option for screenshot. Simply tap on that button, and now the screenshot has been taken. And then finally, we have three finger screenshot as another method. So simply take three fingers, place them on the display, and you'll take the screenshot just like that. Now the next thing I wanna show you is how to get a battery percentage in the upper right corner here in the Moto G 5G 2023. Now by default, we do get a battery icon that does somewhat indicate the amount of charge left in the phone, but of course it's nowhere near as precise as having the actual percentage. So what we can do to get the percentage is pull down the shade, go to the gear icon for the settings, go to search, type in battery, and then you'll see an option for battery percentage. So go there and then go here. And now that's enabled. And then you can see at this point in the upper right corner, we do have a battery percentage present. And it doesn't matter where you are throughout the operating system, it'll be up there letting you know how much charge is left. Now also in this battery settings area, there's a lot of other good things here you might wanna check out. Now the first one I'll show you is battery saver. So basically with battery saver, it's gonna further prolong the battery life on your device. But in exchange for that, it's gonna cut out a lot of different background activities. So I don't recommend having this enabled at all times, but if it comes down to a situation where you know you're gonna need battery saver or else your phone will literally turn off, then I would recommend enabling this. So with battery saver enabled, like I said, it cuts out different background tasks. It also switches the phone to dark theme and does some other things as well. But in exchange for that, the phone will last a lot longer. Now what's cool is that when you plug the phone back in or recharge it, battery saver will turn off when the device reaches 90%. And if you find yourself using battery saver on a consistent basis, maybe at a certain time towards the end of the day, for example, every day, then you can actually set a schedule here for that to be enabled automatically. Or you can also have the schedule be set based on the battery percentage of the device. So we'll go here. And then you can see that there's a full scale of different options up to 75%. So if you want the phone to go to battery saver once it reaches 40%, for example, you can easily set that. So that's really cool. Another good one I wanna show you here is optimized charging. So if you do enable optimized charging, the idea is that the battery won't degrade nearly as fast because the charging is optimized. So basically it'll recharge the phone up to 80% and then for the final 20%, it'll charge it based on your typical device using habits. So basically in return for that, the phone's battery will kind of hold up further as time goes on. Now, while we're in the main settings page here, there are some other things I wanna show you under display. So heading over here, you can see we have an option for screen timeout. Now I did set the phone's display to turn off after 30 minutes because I've been making a lot of videos about the device, so I don't want the display to time out, but I do recommend trying out different screen out times. I believe the default is 30 seconds, so you might want a minute or two minutes possibly. And then also we have attentive display. So basically your screen won't turn off if you're looking at it. So by enabling that, it's gonna use the front facing camera to basically see if you're looking at the phone or not. So that's helpful. We also have dark theme. So enabling dark theme will of course make the phone darker. And this is especially helpful later on in the day and also maybe if you're in a movie theater. 
So you can also set a schedule for this one as well if you find yourself only using dark theme during certain times of the day. There's also display size and text. So if you want your icons to be bigger, you can do that or change the size of the fonts. You can also pick bold text as well. So some different customizations there. There's also colors for the display itself. So if you want a more natural look, you can do that or you can pick the color temperature. So that's a nice adjustment there. Now there's also display refresh rate. So by default with this device, it will be set to auto. However, the phone does feature a 120 hertz refresh rate, and if you want that at all times, you can have it be always set to that mode. Now in return for that, the battery life isn't gonna be quite as good, but at least you have the ability to make that adjustment. And then, if you want the phone to be at 60 hertz at all times, everything is gonna look a lot choppier, but in return for that, you're gonna have the lowest amount of battery consumption. Now also under the display settings is an option called swipe to split. So basically you'll see apps in split screen by swiping back and forth. So. We'll head over there and it's not enabled by default, by the way, but you can see basically you have to swipe over and then we can use that feature. So let's try it right now. There we go. Perfect. So I'll enable that and then now try it out. So I'm going to pull up the first application. So I'm going to pull up the calculator. There it is. So I'm going to swipe over and then now I'll pick the secondary app. So I'm going to pick the web browser. And then now you can see it's a 50-50 split between the browser and the calculator. And then from here, I can actually adjust. So if I want more of one app and less of another, I can do that. So that's pretty helpful. And then if I do want one of the apps to take over completely, I can swipe all the way. Now heading back over to the gestures menu, there's a few other things I wanna show you here. So we'll go there to gestures. We'll go a little bit further down. And the first one that I wanna show you here is called quick capture. So basically twist your wrist twice quickly to open the camera app at any time. This is enabled by default, so let's try it. There we go, it takes me right over to the camera. So that's really nice. Then heading back over to here, there's fast flashlight. So turn the flashlight on or off with two chopping motions. Also enabled by default. There we go, the flashlight's on. And now it's off, so that's really useful. And then the last one I wanna highlight here is called Flip for DND. So you can enable that. And then basically if you put the phone's display face down, it's gonna put the phone in do not disturb mode. And then when you pick it back up, it's gonna take you out of do not disturb mode. And then finally, I wanna show you some keyboard customizations with the Moto G 5G 2023. So by default, we don't actually get a dedicated number row here on the keyboard. You can of course go down here to the numbers to access a number row, but what we wanna do right now is have this always be the number row. So what we're gonna do is go to the gear icon for the settings. We're gonna to go to preferences. And then from here, you're gonna see number row. So enable that, go back. And then now we do indeed have a dedicated number row here. Now there's a lot of other customizations you can make for the keyboard, but I'm gonna show you how to change the themes. So heading back over to the settings, you can go to theme, and then you can pick a color, you can pick photos, you can pick gradients. So a lot of different options here. I'm gonna make the keyboard green. I'm gonna apply. And then now going back here, you can indeed see that we do have a green keyboard. But this concludes my video on tips and tricks and hidden features for the Motorola Moto G 5G 2023. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new today, and if you did, definitely give it a thumbs up. But this is Kevin here, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Take care.